Hi everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. What is the secret to living a long, healthy life? That is a question which has been asked since the beginning of time. And I must say that not infrequently when I'm working in the hospital, we will see somebody admitted who is in their 90s and they haven't been in hospital for a long time and something has happened and it's led to a hospital admission and I'll be going through their history and they haven't really got too many medical conditions listed. And then I'll go over their medications and they're on no prescription medications. Maybe they're taking a few good supplements, but no prescription medications. It's always a pleasure to actually see that happen. Somebody who is elderly not be on prescription medications because, of course, most people over a certain age do take prescriptions. And I will talk to these patients and they'll say, well, I haven't really been sick. I've been very healthy and then they'll share their habits with me. And most doctors out there have had experiences like this and will think to ourselves, is there something genetic to this? Somebody who is healthy into their 90s, are they genetically going to be very healthy people? They haven't got many medical conditions, not much has happened to them and they're not on any prescriptions. Counteracting that is the argument that there is so much research out there that anybody's health at any given point in time is much more due to lifestyle and personal decisions than it is due to genetics, which should be a source of hope for everybody out there our own personal decisions, what we do every day, is much more likely to have an effect on us than our genetics. Obviously, there are lots of cases out there where people do have a genetic predisposition to an illness or they may have just been unlucky and they wind up needing lots of doctor visits and also end up on prescription medications. Nevertheless, the goal for everybody should be to live as long a life as possible, as healthy as possible. And I'm sure most people would agree that there's no point living a long life in terms of years if you're not healthy. It means very little. And on that note, I want to share with you a fascinating recent study. Take a look at this, recently published in a science publication. The blood of exceptionally long-lived people reveals crucial differences. People who live to 100, once considered rare, have become commonplace. Indeed, they are the fastest growing demographic group of the world's population, with numbers roughly doubling every 10 years since the 1970s. On that note, let me share a story with you, which I like to share with people in the United States because they find it fascinating. But in the United Kingdom, when people turn 100, they get a letter delivered to them, which is signed by the monarch. Obviously, for decades, this was from the Queen, and many people out there who were in their late 90s used to be holding on simply to get a letter from the Queen. That's what happens in the United Kingdom. And I did hear that towards the end of her reign, she was having to sign way more letters than she used to in the 1950s and 60s because people were living longer. That's a good sign. How long humans can live and what determines a long and healthy life have been of interest for as long as we know. Plato and Aristotle discussed and wrote about the aging process over 2,300 years ago. And then they talk about the secrets behind exceptional longevity. And they quoted a recent study published in Gero Science, that's a great name by the way, which unveiled some common biomarkers, including levels of cholesterol and glucose in people who live past 90. So how big was the data set? Well, it looks like it was quite huge actually, according to their description. The research included data from 44,000 Swedes who underwent health assessments at age 65 to 100. These participants were then followed for 35 years. So obviously they take a country which has good baseline health compared to many. Certainly the lifestyle habits in Sweden are not as bad as the habits in the United States or United Kingdom. And interestingly, the vast majority of the people reaching 100 were female. And as usual, it is the females that outperform the males in a medical study. So they had 12 blood-based biomarkers related to inflammation, metabolism, liver, and kidney function. This relates to my own specialty of lifestyle medicine and metabolic health, so I'm very interested in this. All of these have been associated with aging or mortality in previous studies. So what are the biomarkers? The biomarker related to inflammation was uric acid. That's very interesting in all honesty. I don't routinely check for that unless I suspect that somebody has gout, but they're listing uric acid here. Then they looked at total cholesterol and glucose. They looked at liver function tests, including ALT and AST, albumin, that is protein, 
and the GGT, which is another marker of liver function, along with alkaline phosphatase, ALP, and lactate dehydrogenase, LD. They also looked at kidney function, creatinine, iron and total iron binding capacity, which is linked to anemia. I'm actually a fan of checking iron levels. And also albumin, which they mention here again, is routinely tested for on liver function tests. So what did they find? Well, they found that on the whole, those who made it to their 100th birthday tended to have lower levels of glucose, creatinine, and uric acid from their 60s onwards, although the median values didn't differ significantly between people who reached 100 and people who didn't reach 100 for most biomarkers. People who did reach 100 seldom displayed extremely high or low values. For example, very few of the people who reached 100 had a glucose level above 6.5 early in life or creatinine level above 125. They're using European units there. A glucose of 6.5, by the way, is around 120 in the United States. And what about the other blood markers? Well, they found that people in the lowest out of five groups for levels of total cholesterol and iron had a lower chance of reaching 100 years as compared to those with higher levels. Interesting there, the people with the lowest cholesterol had a lower chance. Meanwhile, people with higher levels of glucose, creatinine, uric acid, and markers for liver function test also decreased the chances of making it to 100. And what was their overall conclusion? Well, it says here, the study, however, does not allow any conclusions about which lifestyle factors or genes are responsible for the biomarker values. However, it is reasonable to think that factors such as nutrition and alcohol intake play a role. Keeping track of your kidney and liver values, as well as glucose and uric acid as you get older, is probably not a bad idea. That said, chance probably plays a role at some point in reaching an exceptional age. Of course it does. But the fact that differences in biomarkers could be observed a long time before death suggests that genes and lifestyle may also play a role. I would say lifestyle more than genes. So I found that particular study very interesting indeed, and I wanted to share it with you. I learned something from that as well. I use most of those blood tests. I don't use all of them. Like I mentioned, uric acid is one that I don't commonly use unless I'm suspecting gout. But I can see logically how that would be an indicator of baseline metabolic health. And I usually advise most people out there to get blood tests at least once a year, especially above a certain age. Make sure that everything is okay. And the people who live into their 90s, what have I noticed with these people when I sit down and I have the pleasure of talking to them? Well, first and foremost, I will say that very few of them are out of shape. Most people who are in their 90s are not overweight or obese anyway. But I will say that most of them have a very pure, real food diet. They don't overload themselves with ultra-processed foods, which unfortunately the majority of people in this country do nowadays. These people are eating very pure. They are kind of like a protein and two vegetable kind of person. Very few of them will have type 2 diabetes, prediabetes, or insulin resistance because those conditions do have devastating knock-on effects effects for metabolic health if they are not addressed and reversed. I've also noticed that many of them are quite social in their own way. They have very unique, strong personalities, especially the older ladies. I will talk to them and they'll be absolute firecrackers. They'll often be quite opinionated. They'll have a lot of support from their immediate family, from the surrounding community. They are quite outgoing. They will want to communicate with people, mix with them. I'm not saying that they're party animals and they always want to be around people. I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, but they do understand the importance of good social connections, which has been shown in research studies to be very important. They will try to be as active as possible. And there's one other thing which I would like to add in the interest of being totally honest. I can't tell you the number of older people I will see in their 90s and they're very healthy and I'll say, well, what are your unique habits? What keeps you sane? And they will say, yes, I have a cocktail every single day. I'm not talking about drinking excessively. Certainly that's not something I'm encouraging, but I'm being honest that many, many of these people I see, they'll say they drink a stiff cocktail every day. In fact, the late queen of the United Kingdom Queen Elizabeth was famous for that. She used to drink a cocktail. Her favorite cocktail was a Dubonnet and gin. In fact, after she passed away, I remember that week, I was curious because I saw an article and I went to the local liquor store. I'm not a big drinker. And I thought, I wonder what this tastes like. And it actually tasted quite good. And I thought, hmm, 
Good for her. She stayed healthy right up until the very end and she lived until her late 90s. And finally, I would say that attitude and philosophy on life is a big one. A lot of times when I see patients in the hospital, I have the pleasure of meeting many people who are in their 90s and they're very with it and they have the most fascinating stories. And when I round on my patients during the day, I'll often put a memo next to the really interesting ones who I want to go back and talk to if I have any time at the end of the day. And I'll go back and I will sit with them and they will recount to me the most interesting stories. There are not many left now, which is why it's very important that we still do this and hear about experiences from World War II. There are some still around who remember the aftermath of the Great Depression. And these are very resilient people. They are hard as nails. They have been through so much and you can totally tell that they have the right attitude to life. They take things on the chin. They don't take things too seriously and they understand that the world is insane and it's on them to do their best. And it's very obvious that the way they think and their philosophy on life is what has kept them sane over the years. Good for them. One final thought to reflect upon. Thanks everyone for watching. Feel free to comment down below. I enjoy reading all of your comments. Check out my website and my free downloads. Those links are also down below. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. We will speak again very soon.